I'm Jason Ross from KHDK and the Sacramento Kings, and you're listening to the Kings Court Podcast. Down by the river. <laughs> Well, we did take two, and we're still here. But we have head coach, Reno Bighorns head coach, David Arsenault Jr. David, once again, sorry for the technical difficulties, but welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, guys. I'm happy to be here. I appreciate it. I appreciate the patience through our, our little mishaps here. So, like, like I said in the beginning, we're, we're very excited to have Seth Curry on as Kings fans. He's the D-League MVP. He's a three-point barrage shooter he can just shoot threes lights out just like his brother maybe not just like his brother but he's like his brother what can people expect from him going into this 15-16 season yeah i mean he's a he is he's a lights out shooter and he can uh he can he can make shots from anywhere on the floor like uh, you know it's going to be a i'm gonna i'm gonna be curious to see how he does transitioning to to more of the point guard role and, and providing depth at that position just how well he can handle the ball and make plays for others uh, I saw him quite a bit on film last year. The one time we were supposed to play the Erie Bayhawks, he actually was out with an injury, so I didn't get to see him up close and personal. Probably, probably for the better for my team that we didn't have to see him on that night because you know, I think he was averaging over the course of the season 22 or 24 points a game or something crazy like that. So, um, no, but he's a, he's a good kid. I got a chance to, to meet him over the summer, work with him some over the summer. He's a, he's a, he's a great kid, works hard, you know, and I think that he's just going to add some nice, nice depth to the, to the Kings team. Awesome, awesome. So, so when you're watching him through the summer league and or through the D league, and then you saw what he did during summer league and and how well he performed, was there something that when you watched him grow from D league going into summer league? Because you were there in Las Vegas, if I'm correct, uh, on that on that uh, King staff, correct? Yep, I was there. So when you're watching him, you saw him play. I'm guessing you guys watched quite a few games scouting these players. What was it? Did you see like an improvement in one certain area, or was this something like you weren't surprised because you got to see this playing against him in the D League throughout the entire season? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I might have been a little bit surprised just because he was still scoring at that same level in the NBA Summer League as what he was doing all of last year in the D League. But um, you know, I, that's that's one of the great things about the about the NBA D League is it allows guys that maybe just aren't quite ready or need to learn the pro game need to play against high-level competition. It gives them a chance to play very high-level basketball, work on certain things, develop their game, and, and hopefully, like for a guy like him, it's, he's, he's getting a shot now. You know, he's getting a shot in the NBA, which I'm sure has always been his dream. And uh, you gotta you got to feel good for a guy like that that's paid his dues in the D-League and has performed really well to get a chance. Definitely, definitely. So so there's another point guard i got to bring up, and I just, I just got to i got to ask, what are, what should we be expecting from a guy like David Stockton? I mean, we saw a little bit of him toward the end of the season as Kings fans on the court, a little bit of what he can do. Everyone's looking at him as a passer because of, of course, his dad, John Stockton. So is is there is there something about him that that should be that could possibly give him the chance to actually making this Kings roster that you possibly saw throughout your time watching him in the D League and coaching him? Yeah, you know what? He was he was our most consistent player from the beginning of the year to the end of the year last year. He played 40, 40 some odd games with me, and and he was the he was the engine that made our offense go. And you know, of course, he has the ability to distribute the ball. I think one thing that a lot of people probably didn't realize from his college days, and and especially with the longer three point line in the pro game, he he actually shot the ball from the three point line really well for us. He shot just a shade under forty percent from three over the course of the season on on like five or six attempts a game. So um, he did a great job in, in that capacity. And, and you know, just one of the things he makes is he makes his teammates better. You know, his attitude, he came, he came to, the, to work every day, which, it, it, you know, calling basketball work, I, I, have a, I have a great gig going for myself. But, but he came to, the, to work every day ready to get better, ready to work hard. And, and uh, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to be curious to see how he does in training camp to to see what happens with him in in, uh, in the roster situation. Definitely. So, what are what are some things you think he needs to improve on still going forward in his career? Yeah, I mean, he's 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 still pretty young. You know, he was an undrafted rookie last year, and so he just needs to to continue to learn the pro game um, to get used to playing against that size, length, speed. Because uh, obviously he's he's not that big and and uh, you know not not as physically imposing as a lot of the guards that are in the NBA are um, quite clearly. So uh, you know I think if he can just get adjusted to that and and continue to make plays for others and play with the confidence, continue to be aggressive and and and, and push the ball when he when he when he has a chance to, I think he's going to be okay. All right, I'm actually interested in a couple different things. One is. How was your time over the summer with the uh, with coming up to the Kings and in, uh, in the summer league? Yeah, my time over the summer has been awesome. Coach Coach George Carl has been has been very inclusive for me on everything. You know, bringing me out for for mini camps, um, bringing me out, of course, to summer league and 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 having me be with the coaching staff, sitting on the bench, all that stuff. It was a great experience. I came from. Uh, you know, last year was my first year as a head coach in Reno. Before that, I was at a, at a college at a division three school. So I'm still, you know, there's just still so much about the game that I have to learn. And with the staff that, that Coach Carl has in place in Sacramento and him himself, obviously just the knowledge there and the things that I was able to pick up, it was awesome. And, and then just getting the chance to see the whole process, you know, hearing about free agent talks and, and signings, um, seeing how they do everything on the day to day level and, and what they're looking for, it was it was a lot of help. it was a lot of fun, and and it's gonna it's certainly gonna help me with my career. Definitely, and you, and you said it. You got to hear about all these free agent talks, all these things that are going on. So I'm guessing you also heard a lot of the rumors around summer league, and there was that confrontation, or I guess not really confrontation, but the handshake that everyone is talking about. Still, if you go on NBA TV, they'll still find a way. If they talk about the Kings, they talk about that handshake between Demarcus Cousins and George Carl. Was there anything while you were there where you kind of got the sense of? It was kind of being overplayed. It's kind of overdone. Or is there really something there that you know they're they're trying to get over or anything like that? Before you even answer, in in our opinion, I think the national media is been vipers on the whole thing. I hope that's the feeling when George and Demarcus are talking. I hope that's the feeling with Vladi. Man, but please tell us. I mean, I guess it's you know I'm I'm cutting you off here, but you know we're really hopeful. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think, I think, I think they're going to be fine. You know, they're, they're pros. They're obviously, you know, DeMarcus is, is one of the best, if not the best center in, in the game of basketball right now. Coach Carl is a, is a legend and, and, you know, one of the all time greats, highest, highest win total and one of the highest in NBA history, you know, so, so they're going to, they're going to, they're going to figure it out. I think it's just been, been, uh, been, been blown, blown out of proportion there. They're going to be fine. And, and I'm anxious. I'm anxious to, I know that they're anxious. I'm anxious to, to get in the gym to, to start working again. And, and uh, I mean, I, I, I have a good feeling. I have a positive outlook for, for the Kings organization, for the Reno Bighorns organization this, this season. I'm really excited about the upcoming year. Yeah, and, you're, and like you said, you keep bringing up the Big Horns because, I mean, you're the Big Horns head coach. And I got to ask you about a guy like Eric Moreland because he showed, you know, signs during that summer league where I was really impressed. And then, of course, I'm not I'm not going to hold back. There were signs where I was, you know, underwhelmed by what, by his play. And I feel like, of course, he's coming back from injury. So maybe there were times, especially in the beginning, where I felt like he was a little bit of rushing certain things. And, but when he, when he started playing a little bit more, he started calming down a little bit. He started finding his own rhythm, especially learning a little bit of post moves. Uh, the Kings waived him. Uh, he passed through waivers, and there's rumors going around that the Kings might sign him back. Do you know anything about that? And if so, if anything happens, do you see him being back aboard your Reno Bighorns roster? Yeah, I, I honestly haven't heard heard anything other than uh, you know about him coming back to Sacramento or whatnot. I haven't heard anything on that. So, um, but in, in terms of last year, like he he played maybe six six games in, for the Reno Bighorns where he was on assignment from, from the Sacramento Kings that came down to me, played six games with me, uh, did really well. You know, I thought it was, I thought it was, it's in a lot of ways, that's how the D league can help guys. It can help young undrafted guys like Eric Moreland, who, who, again, you know, he needs to, he needs to work on certain areas of his game. He needed to get live game reps. And so him being down there, I thought it was great for him, a great chance for him to just play and, and get better and stay in game shape and, and, and be ready. Unfortunately, he suffered that, that shoulder injury. Otherwise, I, I think that he probably would have spent um, 
quite a bit more time down there with me, just just improving and developing his game. But but uh, no, I, I I I enjoyed the chance to work with him last year. Um, you know, I think that he certainly has a bright future given his size, his athleticism, um, his motor. Like he does, he can do a lot of the little things. Like even though he was our NBA player down on assignment, we very rarely ran ran actual plays for him. You know, a lot of what he did was was just out of his hustle. You know, he was the shot blocker. He was getting on the offensive glass. He was running the floor, beating the other team's bigs up the floor to finish around the rim, uh, rolling hard out of pick and roll situations. So, um, no, it was it was good to work with him. I, I I would I would of course be excited if he were if he were back in Sacramento, but I honestly have no idea what's going on there with him. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to decide who's going to come up and down. I know that's not on you. It's kind of you know uh, it just kind of happens. But I do have one question out of our chat room. Uh, do you think Douche Dukin will actually spend any time with you guys this year, or do you think he's going to stay in sack the whole time? Again, I know it's not on you, but maybe you have some idea on it. Yeah, I mean that's that's it's a it's a good question. I think that a lot of that will just kind of depend on how training camp plays out, you know, and 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 once they kind of figure out what the depth chart is going to be. I mean, there's a there's there's certainly a lot of new faces there in Sacramento on the roster, and uh, training camp will be a time for guys to to prove themselves. I could, I could, I could certainly see him, you know, potentially spending some time down there, but, but I, I honestly have no idea. Um, I'll be happy if he does come down. I'll be, I'll be, we'll be, we'll be fine if he doesn't. You know, that's just, that's just a, again the nature of, of how the D League works. If, if, if there are certain things a guy needs to, needs to work on and needs to spend time, time doing in practice or in game situations, then, then, uh, you know, that's my job to take some of these young guys and try to mentor, try to develop them, try to get them better so that they can so that they can ultimately help the Sacramento Kings. Tell me about a guy like Simba Huler, who, he's the mountain man. I mean, he's huge. He's ginormous. He, he breaks backboards during the summer. So how, what's your thoughts on Simba <laughs> Huler and how he's playing? I have to know how big that man is in person. I'm going to walk up, I swear um, to you, I'll probably like come up to his belly button. That is a mountain of a human oh, being. Oh, it's crazy! You got you got to see him live. I, I, you cannot appreciate. I mean, the pictures, some of the pictures of him are crazy, just how big he is. But until you actually see him live and stand next to him, it's it's absolutely incredible. And uh, you know, of course, he was with us pretty much this whole last season. It's also pretty funny. We had a guy, we had a guy, Tawan Porter, on our team who's five foot seven. And there's a there's a great there's a great Google image if you just you know type in Simbular and Tawan Porter of them standing next to each other at the scores table and. And it's incredible to think that both those guys are playing, you know, playing on the court at the same time together. But, uh, but no, Sim, Sim is a guy that, that, uh, he, he, he has to continue to, to get his body and his mind right to play at the type of pace that, that I know Sacramento wants to play at and that, that I wanted to play at. You know, of course we were, we averaged in Reno about 133 points a game this past year and, and really just got up and down the floor and, and tried to, tried to maximize possession. And it was a challenge at time for, for Sim to to play at that pace, but I thought that I thought that he consistently got better. He was getting his body into better shape, and you know, of course, he still has a ways to go. But but uh, certainly, if he can have another productive season like this last one, then then I think he'll be on on the right track. Definitely, definitely. Let's talk about the team as a whole. I mean, you guys were a fast paced high scoring offense. I I I don't remember the exact number. Was it like 140 points per game you guys were averaging? Is that correct? Or how many points were you guys averaging per game? Yeah, we were up there. You know what? We slowed down a bit at the end. We finished right around 133 points a game. Yeah, you guys you guys are a high scoring team and it was led by David Stockton. Like you said, he was one of your consistent players. I watch your games on YouTube. I mean, it's free basketball. So, I mean, of course I'm going to watch it. Um, but another guy I really liked, I don't know if he finished out I don't remember if I saw him finishing out this season on your team, but it was Rashad James. I feel like he was a really good player. I thought I know that the Kings were looking at him. Who are who are some guys on your roster that you got to see that maybe could see them playing for you starting and then finding their way onto NBA rosters? Yeah, you know, so last year we had uh, we had Quincy Miller there for for a time period. He ended up in Sacramento. Had two ten days in Sacramento. We had. Um, uh, Jordan Hamilton, who was a first former first round draft pick, played in Denver. Um, he ended up signing with the LA Clippers towards the end of last season. We had we had David Ware, who who he he spent a little bit of time there in Sacramento. Um, you know some of the other guys that we had last season, Brady Heslip, He kind of took the league by storm early on, knocked down a lot of a lot of three point shots for us, and, and was really good. He ended up 
actually actually going overseas and, and playing, but but came back, played in summer league, and, and spent some time with the Canadian national team this summer. Um, you know, so there there are a lot of good guys. You know, uh, fringe NBA guys are guys that again were, are young, just need to work on maybe one one two areas of their game, need to become more of a professional, need to uh, need to need to just get things right in their life, and, and that's. That, that can be where the D league comes into play for these guys, or it could be for older guys, you know, veterans that are, that are just looking for another chance or looking for the right opportunity and, and uh, you know, just trying to get back to the NBA. Cause that's where, that's where all those guys in the D league want to be. You know, they want to be in the NBA. Uh, they want to be making, making more money than what they're doing at the D league. They want to be, have that, have that, have that whole thing going for them. So uh, no, but Rashad James is another guy. He came in, you know, he was a guy that really didn't play a whole lot two years ago. He ended up he ended up this last season averaging about about 20 points a game for us, and a really explosive athlete. He was on the King Summer League team two years ago. Was with the Trailblazers this last year, but um, you know, another another guy that I'll be I'll be curious to see if he if he makes his way back to Reno this season, or if he if he does pursue other opportunities to go overseas or, or goes to an NBA training camp or something. So this offense that you run, this high scoring, high speed offense, can you kind of describe, like, I guess, what it is, the type of, I guess, the system that this type of system that you run, what is that called? What's the, I guess, you know, like George Carl, everyone thinks of space and pace, go for the steal. So what what would be your, I guess, slogan or type of mantra for your team for your team system? Yeah, I you know uh. uh... A slogan. I know what we try. We try to. We try to basically trade baskets. If another team scores on us, we're going to try to score within five to seven seconds. And uh, you know, so we we just try to be machine like. We when the other team scores, we try to not even let the ball hit the ground before we take it out of bounds and inbound it. We try to have guys have guys run these designated lanes, keep the middle of the floor open. Last year it was letting David Stockton get the ball in his hands and, and attack and create. Um, and then, and then we really, we really love shots at the rim, and we love three-point shots. Those are those are the shots that we spent the majority of our time taking. We took we took about 47 three-point shot attempts a game last last season. Um, I'm expecting the number to be close to the same again this year. So it really is the, the the threes or layups. I know that that's kind of the way that the game has gone. I know that that is something. And in in some of my conversations with Coach Carl, you know, I know he loves he loves free throws. He loves layups. He likes the three-point shot, and and those are the shots that he would prefer, you know. And so he and I are, are think very similarly on that front, which is which has made it a lot a lot very easy for me to connect with him. So, if you had to compare your coaching style to anyone, whether it be a current coach now or a previous coach, who do you think that would be? Well, uh, you know, it's 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 very interesting because I I getting to know coach Carl and what he wants. There are so many similarities, which is, which is, which, I mean, the interesting thing is that I was hired, you know, last, last October and, and, and was kind of introducing this up-tempo system, which, um, you know, which, which it was, it was good for us. We had, we had success on a lot of different levels, but now with coach Carl there, um, seeing what he's doing, I've been able to pick up on a lot of things, just little tweaks that I can make to what we're doing. So I think that there there can be even more synergy between the Sacramento Kings and the and the Reno Bighorns through this season. If there are young guys that they need to develop or need to get in game experience, that they can they can send them down and know that it's going to be a, a comparable system that that their their players are are playing in. Yeah, because I mean, from what you described, and I don't know if you've heard this at all. But from what you're kind of describing, you want to be up pace. You want to beat the team down. You want to be five seconds or less, or was it six seconds or less? What was that your mantra right there? Was six seconds or less? Yeah, we were going. We were trying. I just tell them. I just tell them that we're uh, we're trying to trade baskets five to seven seconds and trying to play with the twelve second shot clock. So with that mindset, with that mantra for your offense, you ever been told like maybe that's a Mike D'Antoni type of offense? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is very. There are a lot of similarities with that as well. Um, you know, I, I learned this offense from my dad. I played for my dad out at Grinnell College. That's a Division three school in Iowa. Uh, they had the guy a couple of years ago that scored 138 points in the game. Um, and uh, so I played for my dad, learned this, learned this kind of crazy style of play from him. And, and, uh, and, and we experimented with, you know, with it last year in the D-League. We also, we also defensively, we pressed a lot last year, tried to force turnovers. Uh, we actually had a couple games last year where we forced the other team into into 39 uh, 
uh, 39 turnovers. Um, but you know, that, that, that was, it worked for us for a while at the end of the day when, when we only have 10 guys on our roster, it, it was tough to sustain that type of thing, especially with a long season. But again, you know, we're, we're, we tried some new things out. I think we're honing in on a little bit better direction this year and, uh, and hopefully we can continue to have some success. Man, I would love to see that brought up to an NBA level. Uh, I'm really, really happy that the Kings brought you up and, and, and I want to see that. Like I said, I want to see that type of pace just to see how it worked when you had a full 13 man roster, when you had a, a team that stayed together. Cause part of the problem you had last year was the turnover. I mean, you got 10 guys, you're trying to teach them a complex system and you got, you know, you might only have them for a little while. So I, I could see how that might, <laughs> might be challenging, but uh, we only have a few minutes left with you. And I really want to bring up the most important thing. Again, one of my passions I am so excited about these open tryouts. Do you want to go ahead and, uh, and announce what you're doing and how it works? Um, and then I, I guess I have a few more questions, but go ahead and at least announce it and tell them, tell them what's happening. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, f- first of all, I want to, I want to thank you guys. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's awesome for you guys to take a guy like myself, uh, you know, Dave Arsenal, head coach of the Reno Bighorns. Uh, you're listening to the Kings core podcast which is awesome uh i'm having a great time on it i know that i know that these guys have a special treat coming up for you here later but uh but uh i'm 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 excited to be here i wanted to thank you guys at the same time we'll we'll talk about the open tryouts we got our open tryouts coming up here one in reno on on august 30th the second one in sacramento on september 5th and uh they are literally open to anybody anybody that that uh that thinks that they have have, have the skills or, or are just looking for an opportunity to showcase their skills. Uh, if they've been overlooked um, and, and you want to try out and then, uh, then now's your opportunity. Like we end up, we end up taking five guys from the tryouts. They make our training camp and, and we bring them in, you so, know, and, and I get, so yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, so is it okay if I show up and you guys just put me on the team? Cause I'm just so amazing. I'm just throwing that out there <laughs> right now. Like as soon as you see me, you're like, yeah, he's NBA ready. <laughs> I just have NBA I, radio ready is what he is. You, you, you know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Steve Novak out there. I can just <laughs> knock down three pointers like it's nothing. You know, in the real game, you don't get to use an Xbox controller, right? Yeah, that's the, that's my only problem. Is that like I pretend that I'm as good as the players on NBA 2K, yeah, yeah. and then I step on the court and I'm terrible. It sucks. <laughs> well, again, the, the reason it excites me so much. I love the story of the underdog. I love the Rocky story of life where, you know, some kid who didn't have a chance to go to college, some kid for whatever reason, whether it was money, whether it was some kind of problems in his youth, whatever, he straightened himself out, he got good, and now he has a shot, and he, and he might make it onto your league. And you guys are the fastest way to the NBA. I mean, you get on a D-League roster, you're being scouted, you're being watched, people want you up. I mean, if you're good, you're coming. And there's, there's no middleman. You don't have to worry about anything except for how you play. You put it in the hole. They want you. That's it. And uh, and I love that story where there's no, like I said, no cost, no grades, no nothing. Just put the ball in the hole, man. Uh, defend, do all the stuff, and and you're in. So, so Dave, are you going to be? No, a- you're. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say you're you're absolutely right. I mean, it's it, when you you hit the nail on the head when you said it's the fastest way to the NBA if you're not in the NBA because, uh, you know, the D League set a record again last year for the number of guys called up to the NBA. Uh, which which it seems like that has happened year after year, and uh, there's no reason to expect it to change. I know it's growing in popularity, and and it's it's very good basketball, you know. And I think that there are guys out there uh, that can that can help help NBA teams. And and again, you know, if you if you're just looking for that second chance, these open tryouts can be can be a great way to get it done. Are you going to be attending these open tryouts? Just a curious question. Oh yeah, I'll be I'll be at both of them. I'll be at the one in Reno. I I, I uh, am headed out to Reno this, uh, here here this next Friday, and then I'll go to Sacramento from there. Um, and and I'm excited. You know, I was I was not at the tryout last year in Sacramento. I hadn't been hired yet, but I was at the one in Reno, just kind of taking it all in. I will. I'm I'm going to be more involved certainly this year. You know, implementing uh, so just some of the basic concepts of our style of play, so that I could really see how guys fit in to what we're trying to do. And, uh, and and taking a look, giving guys a, a fair look. 
Definitely, definitely. Well, when you do come down to Sacramento, we have a, we want to have you back on the show again. We're gonna we're gonna have you on. You can come here into our studio and have a good time with us. Come sit down. We'll have a beer here waiting for you. We can talk some more about this D League team and what you saw at these tryouts and things like that. So we'll definitely have a spot for you on the show whenever you want well, to come on. It'll be easy for Vince to get a hold of you because he's definitely making the team. I mean, you oh, know. yeah. I mean, you're you're gonna be like, dang, where does what is this guy doing? Just being on the radio. He needs to be on the court. That's what you're gonna be saying. Vince, Vince, can you shoot? You heard me say we jacked up forty. Seven threes a game. Can as long you as you them? don't, as long as you don't make me run up and down the court like all the time. Like if you're not expecting any defense at all, and you just want me to sit in that one corner, I can drain at least three out of ten of them. I swear. I'll be a good motivational tenth man, but that's about as far as I'm even asking for. Like I'll sit in the locker room and pump everybody up, but yeah, I'm not. Uh, you, to give me a basketball in my hand, I'll throw it. But good, good luck, you know. Does does it cost oh, any, does it cost anyone to try out at all? Yeah, so we have it. We have it. It's a. Uh, it's one hundred and fifty dollars to try out. Um, it's it's Saturday in Saturday September fifth in uh, in Sacramento at the at the Sacramento Kings practice facility. Um, you know, so 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 not only not only will I be there, but I I mean I, I guarantee that a number of the Sacramento Kings personnel will be around uh, on that day and and at least stopping. By poking their head in the gym, who knows? Maybe, maybe you'll just buy. You can just bypass me altogether, Vince. <laughs> so you said you got to see it a little bit in Reno last year. How many? Uh, you said you take five players that go into training camp. How many people from that training camp of those five actually made the roster? Uh, we had three of our guys from tryouts last year make our opening day roster. We also, we also, you know, so we 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 could, we wanted to bring more than five to training camp, but we by by league rule we're only allowed to bring five. So there were another of other guys or a number of other guys that we actually we actually then drafted in the D League draft. That way that we could just you know because because we had some really good candidates at our tryouts that we wanted and thought could help us and and uh, you know so there were some guys that that uh, that did it that made it. There's a lot of success stories out there so. Uh, you know, and it was, it was guys that were just, you know, they were just either getting their life back together or they had taken a break or, uh, you know, they were just looking for the right opportunity and, and, uh, they figured out a way to make it work. Awesome. Awesome. So, I mean, you're going to hear my name. So just remember Vince Miracle, you can draft me on the next NBA D league draft. Just, I, I just, just know right now I want to wear the number five. All right. I want to be amazing. I don't know what, pick, I don't know what pick you guys are, but hopefully it's number one overall. Cause I deserve that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome! He's been drinking, so I'm not even gonna. <laughs> that's you know. not true. That's a, I drink lemonade. I, I don't. Oh, drink, I, drink, I, I only drink water. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. only drink water because I'm in training right now yeah, for the exactly. September 5th tryout. Right now. So. Well, hey, uh, David, thank you very much for coming on. We got to cut out because we got to uh, we got to get to our contest. Our people are. I'm sure they're getting antsy. Um, but again, thank and you they're for they're they're on. waiting. Uh, we, I I they're may waiting. actually try to sneak up there for the Reno one and. Uh, and I'll try to come up there and watch that because, again, it is my favorite story in all of sports. I, I cannot stress it enough. The hair on the back of my neck stands up when I hear about some kid who makes it. You know, kid deserves it. I want to see him make it. I want to see some kid in the NBA two years from now because we told him about it on the air. I, I, I pray for that moment where somebody tells us that we, that we help them out like that. So uh, I hope that it happens. I hope even if it's not through us, I hope somebody finds out through the newspaper, through some other radio program, through whatever I hope some kid who really deserves it shows up at your tryout and just baffles us all that he is so amazing. So That's it, man. So I, like I said, thank you again for coming on. We really do appreciate it. September 5th, when you're down here, come join us again in studio. We'll have a spot here for you, a microphone for you. We can talk more about how much you just want me on your team, and <laughs> we can just keep going on from there. So. Thanks. Is there any like any last statements that you want to let the fans know out there? Any potential players that you out there you want them to know anything of what you're looking for at all? No, I I just want to thank you guys. I want to I want to say I'm really excited about you know not only the Reno Bighorn season but but of course I work for the Kings, so I'm excited about the Sacramento Kings season. I I know that there's been you know the the roster. I'm excited about the roster additions. You know I'm I'm, I'm I cannot wait for the season to begin. Oh wow! I forgot to ask you the most important question on this show. Oh, it's the contest. I have made a bet. Oh, uh, I assume you know who Jason Ross is. Call some of the games for the Kings. Myself yep. and Vince have made a bet. Jason joined in on it at some point, but we made a bet on whether or not the Kings would make the playoffs. If the Kings make the playoffs, I get to throw both of them into the Sacramento River. 
if they don't make the playoffs, they get to make me go swimming. Which side of that do you they fall on this year? <laughs> be hey, real. Hey, uh, be real. Be real. Hey, I think they can do it. I think they can do it. I'm going to be I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I think they got. I think. I think that they can do it. So, uh, do you want to no, join? I'm, I'm, would you join the bet if if they if they don't make the playoffs? <laughs> oh, you and Joe get thrown into the river. Oh, would man. you join that bet? Oh, jeez, I don't. I don't know about. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, so he's not that confident. He's confident. He has, he's he has confidence, but yeah, he's like Joe can go in twice. <laughs> Right, that's 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 just because I don't I don't know that I don't know I don't know the specs of the Sacramento River well enough to know whether or not that's something I want to be. Uh, oh man, it ain't yeah. that cold. It ain't that cold. It's gonna be April. We'll be just fine. And hey, I'm not swimming anyway, so I ain't worried at all. I've already bought him floaties. I already got him inflated. I'm not worried at all. We're gonna not only make the playoffs, we're making it through the first round. I got no worries at all. We got a group together this year. We're gonna be screaming out so loud. We're going to blow the other team's best player out. He's going to miss at least three shots based on our defense alone. We're going to have what's called a verbal defense, and I'm going to try to lead it this year. So I'm going to stop. Uh, what, what, what free agent signing are you, or, or new face are you most excited about? I'm curious. Uh, to be honest with you, it's somebody that we kept. I, uh, well, I mean, back and forth, but uh, Omri Caspi. I absolutely love him. I know he's not the, the player that everybody loves the most, but I love a guy who's a glue guy. I love a guy who comes takes his teammates overseas, puts them in the river, gets them muddy. I mean, they seem like they're having fun again. Man, they're excited. Yeah. They're, they're, they're playing basketball. They're playing a children's game for millions of dollars. If they can't remember that, if they can't have fun, then what the hell's the point? I don't get it. Like, you know, you see some of these guys, they come off the court, they don't look happy. Dude, you're making millions of dollars to shoot a ball in a hole. It's amazing, man. You get so I, – I get, like, again, I get the hair on the back of my neck stands up because I want to – explain to him you almost want to sit him down and, and like choke him like dude you're playing basketball for a living you gotta have fun you gotta do dumb shit like go get muddy in a river you gotta you know you gotta have fun uh i, I don't know man i could go for days on that subject because it just it blows me away when i see these guys who take it so seriously and they're so agitated and they're so mad hey have fun you're playing basketball so i, don't I know. agree I agree. It's got to. It's got to be the best job in the world. I, well, I got the second best job in the world. But they got. You know, I. I would obviously rather be playing. But uh, yeah, but you, you don't got to sweat. But, uh, I mean, that's no, a pretty good. That's a pretty good trade. I mean, <laughs> you get to wear a suit and like be air conditioned all day. I mean, I'm not. You know, you might have it better. I don't know. That's a. That's a, a damn. A damn close second, if not first. <laughs> <laughs> you You are. You are correct. Although I think. I think I'd still be rather. Rather be in the uniform than in the suit. Yeah, but again, when you're my height, you know, I'll take the suit because uh, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't make a shot all day. I'd be booed out of the stadium. I'd have to go sell hot dogs for a living. Like, I'm telling you right now, get my uniform over. ready. Get my uniform ready. <laughs> Opening night starter. It's gonna say, number five. It's gonna say miracle water guy. <laughs> water boy, ball boy, ball boy. Hydration therapist. All right, Dave. Again, thank you so much for coming on. I know we've kept you like seven minutes over. Um, but anything else, Vince, before nah, I... No, man, I just really appreciate you coming on. And so, like I said, September 5th, we want you here in the studio. If you have the chance to do it, we could talk tryouts. We can talk anything you want to. Sacramento Kings season, maybe you'll join the bet by then. But other than that, man, I really do appreciate you coming on the show. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Look forward to talking to you soon. All right, thanks. Have a great day, man. Well, that was awesome. I'm telling you right now, that was amazing. What was the biggest takeaways you took away from that, Joe? Man, it's always the same. I mean, he, he feels the same way I do. He has the best job in the world. And again, he said second best. But, I mean, they play basketball for a living. He coaches basketball for a living. These people that don't get that, the people who are in the league, whether they're in the staff, whether they're in the front office, hell, whether they're selling tickets, whether they're selling hot dogs, you work at a basketball stadium. You're playing a game for a living. You're having fun. You know, the fact that people, certain people feel it, certain people don't. The people who don't, I don't know what to tell them. When I'm in the stands this year and I'm screaming my head off, it's for the guys who actually feel it. And if, if they don't, well, I mean, I, hey, they're going to have to hear my voice anyway, so whatever. But uh, I don't know. I, I love that the D-League is <clears> – <throat> excuse me. I love that the D-League is open and that they're going to have the tryouts that guys can, can come up and just learn from. It's, it's awesome. So. Yeah, definitely. One of, I don't know. I just loved everything that he said about his fast-paced offense, about – 
just everything that that he's looking forward to doing and being that being that this is going into his second season about how he wants to just feel more and he's got to do more with George Carl he got to do more with all these types of players one thing I didn't get to ask him I really wanted to just hear his thoughts about Ben McLemore but I want to remind everyone that that conversation and this show, The King's Core, is sponsored by BrickHouseIndustries.com. Go to BrickHouseIndustries.com, use the promo code King's Court, and get a discount on us. And the guests just keep rolling on because on the show today, he's tried to call him before. We had technical difficulties. No, never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, because that, that episode has been deleted. So if you were here for that one episode, uh, you know what it is. But if you haven't, that, just, that, that should never happen. But he, he is one of the writers for SatKingsNation.com. He's joining us because one of the contests actually involves this guy. He's not going to give away anything. But Josh, tell the fans how you're doing today, sir. Josh Means here, big boy. I'm doing pretty good. Vince, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to talking about the contest and uh, no, no. Let's just let's just bust out the contest now. No, you no, two. No, I'm not ready yet. I'm not I'm ready. Oh, uh, come on. Vince isn't ready. I want to post the picture to Instagram. I want to show you guys what. Okay, Vince, please. They've waited long enough. We've made them listen to us yap for 40 minutes now. They need to hear what the first one is. And don't get me wrong. Okay, actually. Which one do you want to start with? Let's put it that way. Which one would you like to tell first? I know you guys are nervous about one of them. I'm not okay. nervous. I just, oh, you're nervous. I'm just, I just want to see how many listeners we have. How many listeners do we have right there? How many does it say? Well, we got nine in the one chat room. I don't know about... I only have the one pulled up because I'm so afraid to touch anything today. We've had a little technical difficulty, and I am not screwing with it, man. Okay. I'm not going to touch anything. So, again, <laughs> I, I know in the one chat room I got nine. I'm not even switching over to any of the other rooms that I got going so we'll just say nine. I don't. We're gonna go with nine. Okay. The reason why I asked. The reason why I asked is because if the more listeners we have, the bigger the announcement I have. Or if we have a caller right now, and they just say big or small, big or small, they can call it big or small, and I'll and I'll do it. So call into the show right now. All right. Yeah. First one called in. Get the get the number thrown out there. Nine one six two seven three nine seven seven seven. You say big or small, and I will let you know the contest. All right. Bigger, just big or small. Or you can even write it in the message board. But write it in the message board because it's amazing. It's amazing what we're doing. Josh, how excited are you about this oh, announcement? Oh, we already got one. We already got Connie Ross. She already came across the message board. Haven't even received a phone call yet, and she's already thrown out big. She wants to know she the big She wants the big first. news. I'm telling you, my two – okay, I will start this. These two are nervous because this bet involves them. It involves tickets. Don't get me wrong. You guys are going to be involved. But at the end of the day, there's things bigger than tickets. All right, just go ahead. Go there's ahead. things Throw it bigger out there. than tickets, what people. Know, Vince. All right. So, the SatKingsNation.com crew is hosting their very first annual Sat Kings Nation arena game. Now, what is that? What is an arena game? Well, we will be taking in a bunch of your guys' videos. Send in video clips. The reason why Josh is here. Is because it's going to be hashtag Team Josh versus hashtag Team Vince. You send in your videos. We select who we want. And, of course, we're going to have an actual draft, too. We're having an actual draft. So you will get tweet direct messages and things like that where we'll say, hey, this is where we're hosting a draft party. And you'll see what team you're going on. And we will let you know the date exactly when it gets to that point. But we will be playing in the Sleep Chain Arena on the Sacramento Kings floor, Team Josh versus Team Vince. All right, uh, I'm going to throw in my two cents here. The winning team obviously gets tickets. Hashtag Team Vince. And they can, they get to go to the game, of course. The losing team has to go to the game, too. Uh, the losing team is going to have some problems. Go ahead and tell them what the problem is. Josh, because you're the losing team, go ahead and tell them what the problem is. All right, Vince. Well, I'm going to tell everybody what you're going to be doing during the game. We are going to be... The loser is going to have to wear a sign... That says, I lost a bet at SatKingsNation.com. Now, what does the team captain have to wear? The team captain, I'm sorry you're going to have to do it, Vince, but you're going to have to go around Sleep Train Arena wearing a purple tutu. <laughs> Man, I'm so excited. Okay, so whoever loses, the, the whole team has to wear signs around their neck that says, I lost a bet at SatKingsNation.com. The winning team can do whatever they want. They can just show up. Drink beer, have fun. We're going to give them seats. We're going to give you Sat Kings Nation t-shirts as well. Like well, the, yeah, of course. They're going to be playing. Nation so it is well. going to be Team Purple versus Team Black because those are our colors, of course. Everybody knows. The, uh, the, the two team captains, again, we're going to have what I want from you guys. You're going to send in 30-second videos 
10 to 30 seconds. 10 to 30, 10 second. to 30 second 10 videos, to 30 seconds. sorry. Uh, you're going to send that into our Twitter account, um, at SKN Articles. Yep. Okay. You're going to send in the videos. We're going to post them up. We're going to have people vote on them. Okay. By the time the game goes, the top 14 guys are going to get picked up. We're going to pick up the top 14 guys. We're going to take them out to a local bar. Even I already know. better. Even, we can make brackets. We can make brackets. Like, okay. as many as All we right. get, we can make well, brackets. Well, we're going we're gonna to have a voting system set up here, and, and we don't have that up and running yet. Just get your videos ready. You guys have uh, a couple days to get your videos ready. We will have the website up and running with the voting mechanism here in the next, uh, let's say, 48 hours. And uh, once I start getting the videos in, we're going to set up some, uh, some voting systems. You guys are going to vote on it. You guys are going to pick the top 14. Then we're going to, like I said, we're going to pick up, go out to a local bar. We're going to have a draft. Vince... Versus Josh, and it's gonna be legit. Joe's. Gonna, oh yeah, no, I'm gonna. Joe's I'm gonna, gonna be, be the. I'm gonna Joe's be the commissioner. Be You're gonna get picked number one through uh, no, number one through seven. I'm gonna give you a number one through seven purple or black jersey. You're gonna go to your team. My team captains. Whoever loses is gonna be wearing a purple tutu to Arc or uh, sleep train. He's Man, gonna I'm gonna call. It, I'm gonna call it Arco every day until I die. Whatever. He's gonna call it with with the first pick. Oh yeah, no, in it's, it's gonna be Nation legit. Anybody wants to come? Draft. Oh, it's it's happening. So okay, Team Josh chooses. Team Vince chooses. <laughs> now, now don't get me wrong. That is the big one. Let's go ahead and tell them about tonight because we we are running long time. We're we're already fifteen out from the show ending, so we better get out the second one because we're so amazing. We're gonna actually give out some tickets tonight, tonight. live on the air. Tonight, because tonight. I know that's what I promised all week. I wanted to get this one out right now. I wanted to get this big one out so everybody could have it. Wait, before we do the tonight one, let's do the ones because we're also going to give it for the okay, next yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah. For next Sunday. Between now and next Sunday, here's the next thing. Go ahead and explain so, so, it. So let me get – this is for next Sunday. So we are giving away tickets tonight. That's 100% going to happen, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But for next week, if you want to try and win tickets, this is all you have to do. Take a picture of an outfit that you're wearing, the most spiritual, the most team-loving outfit that you wear. I want wear. you to shock me with how much you love the Kings with what you're Your wearing. Your face painted purple, a purple tutu. I don't care what you are wearing. I mean, Josh is going to wear that to the first game after he loses. I'm just throwing it out there. Whatever you have that is team-oriented that you would wear to a game, send it to hashtag, with the hashtag SKN Contest. Send it to SKN Articles, at G, or SKN Articles on Twitter, at SKN Articles, <laughs> and... Whoever wins wins. We'll, we'll pick. We'll pick out the best one. Oh yeah, we're gonna pick the best one. We're going to uh, we'll announce it on next and, Sunday, and show. we'll announce them next Sunday. And you're going to get a couple tickets to the opening night game, and you get to sit next to us. Here's my only rule: whoever wins has to wear the outfit that they won for sitting next to me. I'll go just as crazy as you will. Don't get me wrong. I'll do damn near anything you people will. I'm telling you right now, he's wearing a hard hat to every game. Oh yeah, no, no question. I got the hard hat for the tour. Believe me, it's going to be on my dome for, for the games that I'm at. So once again, all you guys are going to do is take a picture of the best outf- Kings outfit that you have, best team-oriented Sacramento Kings outfit that you would wear to a game. Send it to at SKN Articles on Twitter with the hashtag SKN Contest. Now, Facebook people, people that do not have Twitter, it's still to you. Whether that be whatever group you're in, we are basically in every group. If we're not in your group, Vince Miracle, Joe Morgan, Josh Means, Drew Runberg, or other writer, if we're not in that group, unfortunately, we won't see it. So you might want to look to add us. But I'm just saying, that is what we're looking to do. So, best outfit, at SKN Articles with the hashtag SKN Contest. Now, let's go on to... Today stuff, because I mean, we want to give out some free tickets, Josh. But wait, before we get into the contest, actually, let's keep let's keep this thing going a little bit longer. What do you want to see in some of these pictures? Honestly, I want to see as much purple as possible, and I want to see some face paint. I want to see some crowns. Oh, some crowns would be nice, or some cowbells. And I would love a cowbell. Oh, a cowbell necklace. Oh. Flavor, flavor. Oh, two chains. I'm telling you this: if you have batteries attached to your outfit, you might have won already. Like, oh, if you can so. show me some light up stuff, if you could show me, man, again, impress me, world. I'm hard to impress, but it impressed me. That's Hashtag all I'm saying. SKN contest. Kings fans are the best fans in the world. Let's show them how crazy we can get. Okay. Now we're going to move on to tonight's. Again, we're like 12 minutes out, man. We We've packed so we much. Over. I know, over. I know, but it's, it's, you know, I'm trying to be professional here. I'm trying to actually do what we're supposed to do. But as usual, we get fanatical and we get talking and we go long because, well, you know, because I've been long since forever. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, all right. Um, 
You Sorry want... about that, man. I, I got to edit that out before that goes live. Oh, <laughs> that's right. We are live. Uh, all right. Go ahead. Throw out the, tonight's, uh, tonight's contest. We're going to give away two tickets to the opening night game. We're going to be playing the LA Clippers on October 28th. 28th. Wow. Okay, that's me stuttering because apparently... He's so that. excited about I'm this telling contest. You, I've been shaking all week. I wanted to tell everybody. We got like 10 more contests every week between now and and there's so and the much opening game. Things, man. There's so many other things. Every single week between now and the opening game, I'm going to have a contest. We are going to have a contest. I, I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with ideas. In fact, if you guys have a great idea, post it to us. I would love to hear your ideas. I'll tell you this right now. I want to do this to as many games as I can. I want to get as many tickets. Uh, uh, Sack Kings Nation wants to get as many tickets as they can to as many games as they can. Here is the deal. The more people follow us, the more people like us, the more people are on our site... The more I can get advertisers to pay, the more money I can give you guys. Because honestly, we want to break even. I just want to see the world get crazy and purple. Um, I, I want to see... <laughs> I, I don't know. I've had some conversations with some of you guys offline, off of the air. I want to see this year uh, a group of people so loud that what I want is this. Okay, Every time somebody comes into town, every time, let's say, Anthony Davis shows up, if we can piss him off so bad that he misses three shots, and we do that to every game against their best player... We have given the Kings a six-point lead to every game that we play this year. Okay, that is what I want to see. That is that is the most amazing thing we can do. I'm never going to be seven foot tall. Vince is never going to be seven foot tall. Because I already never, am that. Yeah, we're never going to play in the NBA. But what I can do is rattle a guy just hard enough that he misses three shots. And if I can bring 50 of you, 100 of you with me, and we can all be so loud and chanting so loud that we ruin one of these guys' nights, and they missed three shots. We've given our team the lead. Look at last year's uh, roster. Look at last year's um, results. Tell me how many games we'd have lost if you added six points to each one of those games. Tell me where we would have been. So that's our job, Sack Kings Nation. We are going to go into the stands, and we are going to get those six points. I'm writing up some chants. I'm bringing some people with me. We are going to get stupid and crazy. I'm going to scare the people in Sleep Train. So let's start giving those tickets. All right, to that give, very give first them away. Game. I can, I'm going to go all damn day talking about this crap because I get riled up. I just want to scream. I want to like throw shit. I, I want to get crazy. So, so let's get crazy in that get, very get first serious. game of the season. Yeah, get serious. Very first game of the season. If you want to get crazy with Joe, this I'll is tell you what. You better be loud. If I give you tickets and you sit there like a fucking church mouse. Sorry, I said a word I shouldn't have said. That's getting edited. If you sit there like a church mouse, I swear to you, you will never be in one of my contests again. I don't care. If you win 300 times, we will redraw. If you are not loud and you are not screaming, you will never come to our section again. Section 216 this year is going to be so loud, it scares people. So here's how you win the tickets. With the bad word, bad word Sorry, throwing. Sorry, edit, edit. Joe Morgan over there. Again, you guys get me riled up. All you guys got to do, we're going to ask you three questions. You have to call in. You cannot be afraid to call in right now. You have to call in. 916-273-9777. If you answer all three questions correct, you get two tickets to the home opener against the L.A. Clippers. And they're easy questions. Don't call me if you're quiet. Don't you do it. Don't be afraid. 916-273-9777. First one in. If you don't, if you don't call and, you don't, and, you don't, and you're too afraid to call in, I'm telling you right now. We're not giving walk, away any tickets. We're not I'm giving away any down tickets. The street, I'm going to give them to somebody else. So first one to call in. Get the number dialed. Get it rolling. 916-273-9777. Hey, we got our caller. All right, hold on one second. Welcome to the King's Court. Who do we got? Yo, what's up, man? We got Dorian Medina. Mr. Medina, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, man. I'm doing well. I enjoy your show, man. It's pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Share it with everyone. Like it. You, you've you been listening since the beginning. I saw you in the chat board there. What was your thoughts on the Reno Bighorns head coach being on the show? Dude, it's sick, man. I follow a little bit of the Reno Bighorns. Um, I think their organization is awesome. Obviously, like, the you know, Sacramento Kings D-League. So, I think they just have a lot of potential. Their offense is like a running gun offense. And it's it's awesome, man. The whole interview is, is, is good. It's, and it's, it's good. You guys are you guys are all local, right? So, your, your station is all local and stuff? We are all local. We are all local Dude, people. That's what's up, man. See, that's awesome. Because, like, as Kings fans, it's always important to have somebody, like, somebody as an, as an ambassador that's from Sacramento that knows – you know, the Kings, um, up and down, that's been through the rough times, the good times, you know. And, and wow, my golf had seen tickets when I was a kid, so I grew up, you know, watching Chris Weber and Davey and Page and stuff. And 
I'm just excited for the season, man. And the interview was awesome, bro. So I appreciate you guys doing this. I, I actually just saw, um, just heard about this yesterday. I was on Facebook and I saw it. I was like, damn, dude, I, I got to get on this. Definitely, definitely. So let's go ahead and get on this content. Let's see if you can win some Sacramento Kings tickets to the Clipper game. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready, bro. All these questions are from the 2000 and 2001 year. So all these questions are related to that year. The very first okay. question. The last time we were happy as Kings fans. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you have to get all three right. If you get one wrong, you're off. So here, here, here it goes. Okay. True or false, Hito Turkoglu's rookie season was during the 2000 and 2001 season. Uh, that's true. Is that your final answer? Yeah. You are correct. <laughs> Here's the second question. Ready? Are you ready? Yeah. How tall is Vladi Divac? Seven foot, seven foot two, seven foot one, or six nine? Wait, say that again. So, so I repeat the question. You kind of cut out. How tall is Vladi Divac? Seven foot, uh, seven foot two. Seven foot one or six nine? Um, I think he's seven one. That is correct. We might Come be on. having our winner here, Holy guys. Hell, first call might win. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Cat's this got some knowledge. All right, so here is the final question, and this is this is the tough one. This is the one that I think everyone's going to be a little bit iffy on. What's the square root? Okay. I'm just playing. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready, bro. What season? Or what number season was John Barry in when he was with the Kings during the 2000 and 2001 season? Was it his seventh season, his eighth season, his ninth season, or his tenth season? Um, let's see. His since so seventh season was the sixth season. No, no, it was either. Uh, here, I'll repeat the question. What season okay. was John Barry in when he was with the Kings during the 2000 and 2001 season? Was it the seventh season, the eighth season, the ninth season, or his tenth season? I'm going to say seven. I'm sorry, but that is incorrect. Oh, man. Oh, you, you were so, so close. close. All right. You were so we're close. sorry, man. I really was hoping for you man, there. Man, Mr. Medina, you were close. I appreciate you calling I'll in, you man. What, Listen you in got, next week. You got ten more weeks to All try right. it, and we'll definitely talk to you later. All right. Next call coming through right now. Who, who do we got live right now? Yeah, you were close. I appreciate you calling in. This is Patrick. Hey, Patrick, go ahead and turn down the radio on the back back there, man. It's it's echoing back into us right here. If you can do that for me, please. All right. How All you right. Do, how you doing today, Patrick? Have you been listening to the show since the beginning? Uh, I've been listening for I've been listening to you guys. Uh, yeah, from the beginning. Awesome. So, what do you think about that Reno Bighorns head coach interview? I thought it was great, man. I think he's a great coach. I think he's fun. Um, I can see him doing some big things in Reno. And I like and I like what he had taught, what he does on the court. Definitely. Like, uh, definitely, definitely. So, are you ready for the contest questions? They're the same exact questions. So let's just make sure. Let's see how if you were listening through this through while you were trying to call in. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. True or false? Hito Turkoglu's rookie season was during the 2000 and 2001 season. That's true. That is correct. How tall is Vladi Divac? Is he seven foot? Seven foot two, seven foot one, or six nine? He's seven one. That is correct as well. Final question. What season was John Barry in with the King when he was with the Kings during the 2000 and 2001 season? His seventh season, his eighth season, his ninth season, or his tenth season? I say it's his eighth season. I'm sorry, but that is incorrect. Thank you, Patrick, for calling oh, on the show, man. man. Listen next week. Listen it. in next week, man. I really do appreciate you calling in, man. All right. Talk to you next week. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. All right. Uh, we've, we've missed two so far. We've missed next two. Calling well, in? Who's calling in I next? I don't got anybody on the line right now, so the next one to call the number. We got 916-273-9777. Josh, how are you feeling about these questions? The callers are getting so close. Know, the the, the trivia getting... knowledge is there, right? Two out I of three. You guys wanted some tickets. Two oh. out of three are right. Already, all you had to do was be listening, and they're already answered for you. And two of the possible four answers for the last question. Oh, it looks like we have another new caller in here. All right, right who now. do we got here? Who do we got? Let's see. Welcome to the King's Court. Who do we got? This is John Catter J on the, on the chat board. Mr. Catter J. Man, I've talked to you a lot. I'd <laughs> love it if you won first. That'd be outstanding. Oh, wow. You're playing favorites already, Joe? Well, man, man I've, talked to him, fair. I've talked to him in the chat board about 10,000 times. Cat, like... 
He's always chatting with us on here. I've he asked is. questions for him live every time. So. He is. All right. Yeah, we, we don't have that much time, man. We're having callers already calling in trying to do it again. So let's see if you can get these questions. You've been listening. Are you ready? Yeah, I've been listening. True or false? Hito Turkoglu's rookie season was during the 2000 and 2001 season. True. How tall is Vladi Divac? Seven, seven foot. One. Awesome. Okay, seven so listening. everyone's just every he's been listening, so he's yeah. ready. Yeah. What season was John Barry in with the King? What season was John Barry in during his time with the Kings during the 2000 and 2001 season? His seventh season, his eighth season, his ninth season, or his tenth season? I feel like it was. I, I, I'm going to guess nine. I'm going to guess nine. And the winner for the home <laughs> game against the L.A. Clippers. Longtime listener in the chat board all the time, Mr. Catter J, sir. Welcome. Hello. Joe got what he wanted. He's a cheater. No, he's not. He's yeah. really not. He didn't even know the answer. To the- <laughs> Joe- I don't even know the answer to the question. <laughs> Joe- I'm sitting I- over here looking like a dumb animal. <laughs> Joe- Joe's sitting over there yeah. trying to look and see what answer I circled. If I wrote down the right answer, like, what number is it? What season is it? He's all looking and browsing. Congrats oh, to you, man. Is but how thank you. you how, how, you've been listening to the show for a while now. What what do you what do you think you should tell the fans about this show? I mean, you've been listening for quite a while. I'm telling you, I see you on the chat board every single time we start these shows. Yeah. So what what's your aspect or what's your thoughts on this show since you've been watching it or listening to it? Sure, sure. You guys got a great show because you got great guests that come on sometimes, like Jason Roth and the coach today. Great questions with the guests, but also more than that, really, it's just the, the interplay between you and you and Joe. It's really entertaining. It's really fun to listen to. So uh, I'm looking forward to meet you guys pretty soon uh, in a couple months. And so, yeah. Definitely, definitely. And then are you – are you because just because you won this doesn't mean you're not going to be able to be entered into possibly try and win some uh, outfits. Are you going to be throwing on any crazy outfits and sending it on Twitter? Uh, I'm not that kind of guy. I'll be loud, the, I'll be loud <laughs> in, the, uh, in the stadium, but I'm not, I'm not going to put on it. Costume, I guess. Oh, uh, man. I don't know. Well, I appreciate the call, Catter I'll be loud, though. Appreciate right, well, the call, man. We have another caller coming in right now. We just uh, want to get his thoughts on it. Probably hurt his feelings because I he can't I will call win. you back when this is over, and we'll get all the information to get you the tickets, all right? All right. You got my number on, on Yeah, I'm looking right at it here on right? Skype. I just wrote it down, so I will uh, we'll right, talk cool. to you as soon as this is over. All right. All right. Thanks, all right. Sean. Bye. Who do we got next on the line here? This is Connie Ross. Hey, Connie, how you doing? Good. Have you been listening to the show? Did you hear the bad news? Well, I, it just cut out right before I called. Oh, so, so uh, did somebody get the tickets? Someone just got the tickets like right before you. They got so, all three questions right. I, I got good news. I got bad news. We did lose these tickets. <laughs> Again, I'm giving away, or we as a, as a group are giving away tickets every week, at least one set of tickets every week between now and opening night. We have, I don't even know how many we bought. We bought over 100 tickets at least that we're going to give away this year. Oh, there's so many things we're doing too that you guys don't even know yet. So many wild contests. This whole whole outfit thing, all you need to do, get dressed up right now. Send us a photo. Get crazy, get loud. Get as crazy as you can, Connie. I I can do that. (laughs) For sure. Connie, have you been listening to the show since the beginning as well? Uh, It seems about a couple minutes into it. Okay, okay. So what did you think about the interview with the Reno Bighorns head coach, uh, David? I thought it was great, and I'd love to see my son go uh, try out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I mean, he has some stiff competition when he's going against me, you know, because I'm 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 an elite (laughs) athlete. You know, I'm fat, brown, and on the ground, and no one wants to mess with me. I think Vince would be a great bowler, but I don't know about basketball. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of which, who are you voting for in the first annual Kings Arena game. Are you on hashtag Team Josh or hashtag Team Vince? Oh, Team Josh all the way. No! <laughs> what in the world? Why? <laughs> it's not my fault someone answered the questions before No, no, no. In. Vince oh. chose the questions. Vince asked the questions. You're going with Josh. We have no problem with that. Oh. When he wears the tutu, believe you me, pictures will be taken. Uh, I, I, My whole goal in life <laughs> is to get whoever loses on TV because I want it to be immortalized not only in my eyes, but in the world's eyes. And so. when they get you on TV, Vince, I'll be standing right next to you with an I won the Sat Kings Nation <laughs> sign. 
I mean, I, I'm going to look so good in this tutu, they're going to want me to be a cheerleader. I'm telling you right now. I have the hookup for you. I can, <laughs> I can possibly work that out. All right, Connie. Well, be sure to listen in every Sunday and see if you can try one again. Try and do this contest on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you know or, or however you found us from. Use the hashtag SKN Contest. We appreciate you calling in, and hopefully we'll hear from you next week, okay? I will. Thank awesome. you. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care. Bye. All right, guys, the tickets are gone for this week, but you have a chance to win for next week. All you got to do, send in those spirit outfits of whatever you are wearing. We want to see some two chains. I want to see some. I want to see the cowbell necklace. I know that's out there. I know you can get it made. I want to see personalized jerseys, king's pants, purple shoes, anything you got. And also, I want to take a picture with you guys. In that outfit. Oh, definitely. It's going on Snapchat. It's going on Facebook. Instagram. It's going on Instagram. Maybe we'll even put it on the website. Oh, I'll put it on the website. It's going on the website. It's, it's going on the website. Fives. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. These guys are worried about the photo, man. I'm telling you what. I'm just excited that somebody's going to be standing next to me as crazy as I am. If you're willing to wear something that I'm going to vote for, I guarantee you're the kind of fan who's going to yell as loud as I do. So believe you me, we're going to have a, some some damn fun. So uh, we're running out of time. We're basically over the time. Yeah, we're already five minutes over because we, we get excited. But you know? I kind of feel like we should let them know about one more thing we've talked about doing. It's not going to happen today. But, Joe, I, I kind of think you're, you're kind of like, what is it? What is it, right? Yeah, what are we doing now? The scavenger hunt. Oh, oh yeah. Find yeah. us. We, we're going to do it at some point in the season. So you're going to want to follow either Joe, Josh, Drew, myself, or the best place at SKN Articles. And we're going to do the hashtag SKN scavenger hunt. We are going to take a picture of a just something that we see. Maybe maybe it's a maybe it's a Popeyes. Maybe it's a sign, and you just have to guess what area, what store we are in. And if you find myself, you find Joe, you find Josh, who's ever in the area who's doing the contest, they all have tickets for you. So you have you have to be following us. Follow us on Twitter. Myself, I'm at VM Center. Joe, he's at at Sat Kings J Morgan. Josh at J Means. Instead of an S, throw a Z at the end of that N. And I think that's it, guys. I think that's really all we have for today's show. Do you have any closing thoughts there, Joe? Man, I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Again, what I told you in the beginning, you need to follow us on Twitter. You've got to like us on Facebook. You've got to get this out to other people. I have over, uh, you know, the, the, the Kings Court, the SatKingsNation.com team, we have over 100 tickets. It could go up as high as almost 200. It depends on the amount of likes I get. It depends on the amount of uh, of people I get. I, I we want the we want the site to grow. We want this podcast to grow. We want to get better guests. If you guys know people that could come on and be our guests, please contact us. We would love to hear about it. We're gonna have some uh, celebrity judges for a few of these things. If you have ideas for people that you think would be great, please let me know. Uh, uh, I can't think of it. What do you call the instant message in uh, in Direct Twitter? Message, Direct message. There you go. I'm I'm bad with the internet, man. Again, I'm a jarhead. Uh, throw me a direct message. Tell me, tell me who you think would be a good judge. Tell me who you think would be a good guest. Believe me, you tell me who they are, we'll try to get them. I'm tenacious. We're going to get some people on here. Uh, by the end of the year, I want players on here. I would love it if George Carl was on here. Hey, argue with me about how you put out your lineup. So, I, I don't know. I, I, Vince is smarter at basketball. I think I got more motivation in my heart. So I got motivation in the heart. I want the yeah. Kings to make the playoffs. I just all I'm saying. I just got to be a little bit logical with it. That's all all I'm saying. saying is logic is not passion. Those are two totally separate things. You're good at math. I'm good at screaming. One of us is going to win. One of us is going to get wet. <laughs> Believe me. At the end of the year, for all of you guys listening right now, I want you to understand. At the end of the year, whoever which one of us goes in the river, it doesn't matter. You guys better all show up. You guys better all chant. You guys better all have fun with us because somebody is going off of a bridge into some water. And his name is Joe. <laughs> and, his, and his name is Vince, and he's going to have some little ducky flippers on, and it's going to happen. It's also Jason Ross, too. Can't forget about no, that. No, no, no. Jay Jason Ross is going with Jay you. Jay Ross I'm not, is going with me. I'm so. not worried at all. Yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great show. We've had a hell of a fun time. Follow us on Twitter at SKN Articles. Use the hashtag the King's Court from that you listen to us, that you love us. Share us with everyone. Hashtag Team Vince. Hashtag Team Josh on who you think is going to win. Send in those spirit outfits. Let us know with the hashtag SKN Contest. Best Spirit Outfit will win tickets come next Sunday. We will announce it. So on that note, until next time, Sacramento Kings fans, bye-bye.